Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Tim. I'll be a distiller for this evening. So my little business is the Cameron Distillery. We've been going for three years. We distill uh, only licensed distiller on a residential block in Australia, and we distill out of uh, the backyard of my house in Kayleen, which I don't suggest anyone does. It's not very good for marriage. It's just a tip. So very quickly, I'm going to run you through four things today. I'm going to run you through still design. We're going to talk about label design. We're going to talk about bottle design. We're going to talk about my social media. And in that, I'm going to tell you about the increased feminisation of my business. <laughs> right, so, camera to story. This here on the left hand side, so in life we all need three things. We need the love of another human being, we need an intellectual challenge, which I get through economics, which is my day job, and we need art. We all need art, art in different ways, and for me, my art has been gin distilling. Uh, I did start about uh, 10 years ago, um, and I did eventually get licensed. It wasn't a conscious decision to set up a business, it was something that happened, but I kept facing problems, I kept resolving those problems, and I started a business. Um, and I thoroughly, uh, for three years now, we've been uh, peddling flat out. Now, the left-hand side, they're, they're my stills. And so, when we talk about gin, there is both a science and an art to it. The science is making vodka, the science is making it neutral. It's pure chemistry. I can run you through the boiling temperature of the 200 and something or other different alcohols there are. It's a fascinating little exercise, but not in five minutes. Now, stills also represent a business. And so my stills look like these sexy chemistry kits on the, the left-hand side, which most people don't think of when they think of distilling. The right-hand side, that's what most people think of. So that, this is why no one's ever seen my stills. <laughs> One on the right hand side, I did inadvertently buy a couple of months ago. It's due here in three weeks. It's very, very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so next up, um, label design. So uh, this label was designed as that first label. It's myself and my 12 year old daughter at the time. And uh, I didn't realise what I was doing, but we created a label. We didn't have a barcode. That was, that was intentional because it's not part of my business plan to be in places that have barcodes. So you won't find us in Dan Murphy's or Jim Murphy's. Sorry, Dan Murphy's, you will find us in Jim Murphy's. Um, we have the minutry, minimum mandatory labels on that. We've got the craft paper that's brown, it's arty. Um, it's actually far more expensive to do a paper craft label like that than it is to do a high gloss poly label that goes generally on a wine bottle. But uh, that, was, that was not necessarily a conscious decision, but something that we found this defined us. When you talk about distilling and distilling businesses, you get an option to be either a house of brands or a branded product. If you think of Johnny Walker as a branded product, they own one thing, that is their thing. Or a house of brands, which is a little where I think of myself because I don't like making the same product twice. It's a little bit of a problem. Now I've got some other people helping me to make the same product twice. <laughs> I like to make new things. So we, we made this product. I got a couple of people locally to help me with that label. So that, is a very different label from what we'd had previously with that quite masculine label you'd seen before. We also do specialty products, so we've got the Alago here tonight, we do a little smoke product with the Alago. And so, you can see now that our label design is starting to change. We've moved away from this quite craft arty, and we've moved into something that's getting a little bit more designed by someone other than a bloke in his 12 year old daughter. <laughs> now, uh, also in that discussion, I, I, uh, bottle design is something that's extremely important to the appearance of a distillery. We use, if anyone's interested in starting a distillery, what you need is a 28mm GPI screw cap. That's it. <laughs> bottle, or, no one makes bottles in Australia. You can't buy a spirit bottle in Australia. It's nine month lead time. So if you think right now, if you have to have ordered your bottles for Christmas this year, and for me, I didn't know when I started out, Christmas this year, Christmas is the first 10 months worth of sales for me. So November is the first six months worth of sales, December is the first 10 months worth of sales. So bottle design is extremely important. Choose a simple one, buy lots of them. I'm now getting them from China because I it's the only place to get them. This is a little design we've never worked with. Um, and it's important to say that through my social media I've learnt 60% of my online sales come from Instagram. Of those online sales, 82% of them are women blew me away when I learned that too. So this is a little design and, and we didn't end up going with this. I'm going to use it at some stage in the near future. It was just a little bit of a concern I had that it's great, it's gorgeous, plain card, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of look about it. 
but I, I did get a concern that maybe it looked a little bit too like too much like some of my customers. <laughs> so this here is uh, Julie. She designed this label, and this is an awkward moment when I said uh, I would like to take a photograph of you holding a bottle in front of your chest, and she she gave me that. And this is our final label that she did, which, as you can see from this, is a very feminine label. It's a complete change in what we've had over the course of three years, as we learned who our customers were. Because when I started, I didn't particularly know who they were. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.